Live from our Dell Music Lounge on Austin City Limits Radio. Tonight, Stubb, C3Concerts.com for that last handful Be of there. tickets. And then a week from Saturday night, Saturday Night Live, uh. your new best friend, Jonah Hill, hosts. <laughs> uh, so you tweeted that you've been rehearsing in soundcheck. Yeah. Specifically for Saturday Night Live. Yes. What else has to happen headspace-wise to get yourself in a place to oh, play... Man the biggest, what, eight minutes of your career? I have no idea what I'm going to wear. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's, I, like, every time you say that or it gets said out loud, it's just, like, it's the craziest thing in the whole world. And it's the Saturday before the election, which is so exciting, and I don't know, I, it's just wild. Well, I mean, you can't eight, go wrong biggest with Biggest eight minutes of my career, that's stressful, don't say that. <laughs> it's just going to be really fun. I'm sure there's a few campaigns that would set you up with some kind of uh, T-shirt or voting uh, yeah. situation. Should you, you can, go uh, that route? Should you come to my concert tonight, you can buy a T-shirt that says Maggie Rogers wants you to vote. There you go. Speaking of, you wrote this record in these last two years mm -hmm. where we've had the most divisive, uncertain times of our yeah. lifetimes. How do you not let that seep into the process? Or do you? Well, I think my job is kind of just to feel. And I, I feel a lot of things about my personal life, but also, you know, the last two years, I've also kind of become a citizen of the world just by touring and getting to go to all these new different places and talk to different kinds of people. And I think I've always thought of albums as creating a record of a time in my life. and. The last two years of my life have been sort of filled with transition and change, whether that's personally or globally. So it's well, all part of it. The woman we met South by Southwest two years ago seemed to have everything figured out just a month out of college. What? Uh, that, that's what it <laughs> felt like. You, you knew when you'd be taking your Appalachian tour. You yeah. said, I want to do that by the time I I'm started 30. my acting career early. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but you figured a bunch of stuff out and seemed very confident. And then this new song, you say, I couldn't stop it, tried to slow it all down, crying in the bathroom, had to figure it out with everyone around me saying, you must be so happy now. That could be about a relationship, could also be about these last two years. It's definitely about the last two years. <laughs> okay. It's crazy. I think that it's wild to hear that lyric said to me because I think it's definitely like the most vulnerable I've ever written a lyric. And um, I still remember when that, that lyric is from a song called Light On that we're going to play in just a sec. And it, um, yeah. It's it's change is hard and my my life you know for anyone tuning in my um my career was kind of it kind of happened to me very quickly when a vi viral video of me went or when a video of me went viral on the internet um, just out of college and I I was really overwhelmed my very private life became public really quickly and music is it's uh, it's what I love more than anything it's what I've always wanted to do but at the same time. Suddenly there were a lot of expectations about who I would be and who I would become, and I was really scared. But I think the thing is is that every night I got on stage, I was reminded why I love doing this and why there's sort of nothing I ever could do. It's funny, I, I've never made less music than when I started my career as a musician. <laughs> well, because there's so many other, there's a lot of things other stuff to, do. to take yeah. care of. Uh, not long after, or long before we spoke last mm -hmm. time, you had just stage dived for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> has that been an ongoing pursuit? It has not been. <laughs> um, <laughs> my costumes got, this is, yeah, my costumes got crazier, and then I had a bunch of tassels, and then it just felt complicated, but I've been seriously paring down my costumes. I, I've sort of been enjoying just like looking like me on stage. But the costumes were this really special fantasy, like, I don't know, sh shows are supposed to have a little bit of magic. Um, so I don't know. So maybe my, my stage driving career is, is on the up. But <laughs> Speaking of tassels, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going somewhere here. I'm excited for where we're going. 
I watched Madonna's Truth or Dare the other day for okay. the first time in 20 something years. Uh -huh. And you had said to me that Carly Rae Jepsen is impo as important as important Bob Dylan. Me. And and that pop music, I by definition, this. is not disposable. And I was watching Truth or Dare, and I had just watched that Lady Gaga documentary. Mm -hmm. it's and I saw Britney Spears play live the other night. You were in Vegas? No, she was here. Wow. Yeah, she was here. <laughs> See? <laughs> um, so I'm in this little pop music okay. bubble for a minute. I love it. And I think you sort of ride the line in a really graceful way between whatever it is this is and pop music. Is that, that on purpose, that you're mindful of that? I think genres really only exist to sell music, personally. But I don't know. These are just like, when I'm thinking about writing a song, I'm not really thinking about how I'm going to produce the song. I'm just thinking about the emotion and then... When I go to produce a song, I just like, I like to feel and I like to move. And these are these sounds that I'm attracted to now. And I think like, I don't know, I'm trying to think about genre less because it, it just constricts my creativity, I think. Because I make it, it is inherently me. So maybe the next record is a grunge record, you know, or a, or a total house music dance record. But... Right now, the music I'm making is feels like me, and I think that's how I've always been able to tell how I'm feeling over the years, is seeing what my music sounds like. This record is out in January. Finally! You are confident it's the record you want to introduce yourself with. Yeah, of course. I'm so proud of this record, and I'm so excited to for everyone to hear it, and if you come to Stubbs tonight, I'm gonna play almost every song on it. <laughs> because I don't have many other songs out. <laughs> I mean, we've got a lot of music to fill. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the story of my last two years. And I, I don't really feel like I could give anything else. And ultimately, you're playing to crowds that know a couple songs, and they're reacting in real time to songs they've never heard. Yeah. What's that like for you? There's sort of two parts to it. One is... I still, in my career, have never played a show to people who had even the opportunity to know every song. And I'd like to do that soon. <laughs> I feel like that's going to feel really awesome, because the shows already have felt so great. But I think when I'm playing a bunch of new songs, you know, not just one, but like three, four, five, to a new audience, it I just feel really grateful, because it takes an incredible amount of presence and patience to listen to new music, especially live, when you kind of like, I don't know, when I go to concerts, I like mostly listen to the record on repeat, and then I'm excited to hear all the songs I love. But maybe these will become songs that people will love.